Stop looking for me in this house. You'll never find me. Never. Please. This is Iwajinga. We are not born yesterday. Here is why the dramatic raid on Jimmy Wanjigi's home was a secret move by President Ruto to elevate Wanjigi above all other presidential contenders, including the Deputy President Rigabi Gachagua. In what seemed like a scene straight out of a Hollywood thriller, a heavily armed contingent of police officers descended on Jimmy Wanjigi's Modaiga residence, meticulously searching every inch of his property. Their mission to locate Jimmy Wanjigi, the man who has been a thorn in President Ruto's side for weeks. There's nothing you have not been through. Who will have brought to arrest me? For doing what? Funding Gen Z. Oh my God, Ajay Kamajana. <laughs> Don't shoot me. Do not shoot me. Do not, do not shoot me. Do not shoot. Do not shoot me. Do not shoot me in my house. Do not shoot me. <laughs> to bolster their efforts, the government deployed the Elite Special Service Unit, operatives typically reserved for dealing with terror suspects. Was Jimmy Wanjigi a terror suspect? To his family, he is merely an innocent man. But in President Ruto's eyes and his government, Wanjigi is a political adversary, a formidable enemy in the race for power. You might wonder what crime could Jimmy Wanjigi have committed to provoke such intense animosity from the government. Wanjigi's so-called crime was his involvement in the recent concluded protest and his bold remarks suggesting that he helped fund them. There's nothing you have not been through. Who will have brought to arrest me? For doing what? Funding Gen Z? Oh my God, Ajay Kamajana. <laughs> <laughs> that is nonsense. I can, I can fund. I have in fact, when it began, I gave money towards people who are being arrested. Mm -hmm. Right? And I was very public about it. Right? I sent a little money for people who needed bail. Okay? Anybody, in fact, many people are funding. They are funding water. Mm. They are funding uh, toothpastes or tear gas. Yes. Right? I know people who've donated blood. I even went to give blood. They told me I'm too old to give blood. I'm over <laughs> 50 years old. They can't take my blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people are giving their blood. Yeah, masks. Kwani, is it illegal? It was these statements that ignited the government's wrath, leading them to storm his residence in a bid to teach him a lesson he wouldn't forget. However, their efforts to be You're wasting your time. Be found. Yeah? If you want me, it's a simple summons and I'll appear where you want me. Stop looking for me in this house. You'll never find me. Never. Please. This is Iwajinga. We are not born yesterday. Amidst this political standoff between Wanjigi and the government, it appears that President William Ruto may be losing more ground than he is gaining. And here is why he might be inadvertently boosting Jimmy Wanjigi's presidential ambitions. Now, the crackdown on Wanjigi's home comes at a time when half of the country has lost trust in President Ruto. To make matters worse, Raila Odinga, once seen as the champion of the people's rights, is now perceived as causing up to President Ruto turning both leaders into public enemies. Jimmy Wanjigi, who has positioned himself as the defender of the unprivileged, aiming to win the trust of Kenyans and challenge President Ruto in the 2027 elections with Stand the hopes of becoming people, Kenya's next Stand president. with your person next to you when they're in problems. Stand with them when they are doing the right thing, but they're in problems. Tomorrow it will be you if you don't stand with them. I can say today people stood with me. For those kids who have been killed during this mandamano, I want to tell you with all my heart, I stand with you. And I stand with those families. His continuous criticism of the government has resonated with many, leading them to shift their allegiance from the current regime to Wanjigi, who appears to speak the same language as the people.
the language of addressing Kenya's pressing economic challenges. Recognizing the growing discontent among Kenyans, Jimmy Wanjigi has gone all out in exposing the corruption and financial mismanagement within President Ruto's government. This bold stance has significantly boosted Wanjigi's popularity, positioning him as a serious contender for the highest office in Kenya. The raid on Wanjigi's residence comes at a time when the Mount Kenya region is also feeling increasingly neglected by President Ruto. Reports of a potential impeachment motion against Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa further highlights the region's Kini niambie, unawezaje kushikilia your boss? Anakuambia leo, enda useme uhuru ni mbaya. Unakumbuka ile statement ilikuwa kule wakiingia. Akasema we uhuru ulitukosea, iyo mambo ikaisha. Tukatoka hapo. Akamuambia ongea juu ya shareholding, akaenda kisumu, akamuita primitive. Ali, kuita Rigathi primitive ni sisi unaita primitive. Sababu sisi ni mtoto wetu. Tulipo toka hapo. Juzi ya kamuambia Raila hata ingia State House. Weka mitego. Iyo mitego imefika wapi. Ni hame nyiriona hake igerio. Alafu munakuja kutuambia ati tukaya hivi. Ati weka mitego. Ni Raisa ni muambia weka mitego. Raila hata ingia. Leu Raila darako ma bedroom. Alafu munakuja kutuambia nini. What are you telling us? With many in a central Kenya eager to see one of their own in the presidency, Wanjigi, who hails from this region, is emerging as a charismatic leader with the potential to represent Mount Kenya in the 2027 presidential race. Wanjigi might also be able to persuade his community to back his presidential bid, especially as President Ruto appears to be shifting his focus towards the Nyanza region. Given the central region's historical influence in determining Kenya's leadership, evident in how Ruto and Gashagwa united to ascend to power, Wanjigi's support from the Mount Kenya community, coupled with backing from other Kenyans who feel sidelined by Ruto's government, could give him a strong chance to challenge Ruto in the 2027 elections. But the real question is, would Wanjigi successfully defeat Ruto at the ballot? And many argue that Wanjigi should now capitalize on the sympathy he is gaining from Kenyans to fuel his presidential campaign. A President Ruto effectively used a similar strategy by accusing former President Uhuru Kenyatta of persecuting him which played a Sisi ndio tulikusaidia. Waja kujifanya saa hizi eti sijui unajifanya nini. Please. Amani aje my friend. Sasa eti wewe sasa unaanza kunifreaten mimi. Ati utanifanya nini? Bora usiue watoto wangu. Lakini mimi na wewe tafadhali tuheshimiane. Siasa wanaume ni wanagombana nayo huku nje. You don't bring it to somebody's personal home. William Ruto, we can go mbana huku inje. Siasa. Don't bring it to my home. In this home, you have assaulted my wife. You have assaulted my children. My Gen Z children. Those policemen assaulted them. You have vandalized the home. You have stolen items here. You have broken items. What is that got to do with the siasa we do outside there? Many believe that voters supported Ruto and Gashagwa partly to punish Kenyatta at that time. In the 2013 elections, Uhuru Kenyatta and Ruto, who were facing charges at the ICC for the 2007 post election violence, also leveraged the situation to garner public sympathy. Ruto's emotional recounting of his survival from the ICC's clutches resonated with many Kenyans, ultimately leading to the election as president and deputy I'm, president. I'm really With Wanjiki realizing that a significant portion of the country supports him, he could easily use this sympathy to ascend to power by following Ruto's well-tested strategy. Netizens have also warned 
that the more present Ruto focuses on Wanjigi, the more popular and formidable Wanjigi becomes, potentially surpassing Rigathi Gashagwa as Ruto's biggest challenge. Check out some of the reactions right here of Kenyans warning President Ruto against paying attention to Jimmy Wanjigi. <laughs> 